and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. As sales rep for a Philadelphia region paper company, Wilbert Montgomery is no longer the reclusive soul of his football playing days. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I faxed this information over to Sharon from Braceland for you, and everything seems to be in order. Okay. If you have problems, just let me know. All right. There are the prices and everything was good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. seems to be in order. Go for the discount? Well, the thing is, I think uh, when you're out there and being exposed and, and coming in, people talking to you and you interacting with them, it sort of opened you up a little bit more. <laughs> Wilbert is just so nice to everybody. He, I mean, he would just walk around and talk to people, which is kind of unique because here Wilbert would never say a word as a player. All of a sudden, that's all he did was talk to people. While they're <laughs> Crowds and media scrutiny were the last things Wilbert Montgomery wanted when he was drafted in the sixth round by the rebuilding Eagles in 1977. Country boy coming up from the south and said, "Don't speak unless you got something important to say." You know, for, for four years it took me a lot to say words. You know, just to even talk to the media because I was afraid that I might say the wrong thing. But it's just best to be quiet and just go out there and do your job. You're a very sensitive kid. We're playing Minnesota Vikings, and I yelled at him. I mean, I really let him yell it. And he came out of the game and sat on the bench behind me. So I had my two sons were on the sideline, and I said, "Go talk to Wilbert." My son comes back and he says. Dad, Wilbert says he can't play when you yell at him. So I brought him up, and I, that, because that's how he was. This is his temperament. I brought him up. I said, I apologize, Wilbert, but God, you, you, you did this and this and this, and this is how it's got to go. He went back in, changed the tempo of the ball game, and we went on and won it. And he was a great cutback runner. Most of his big runs came from the peripheral vision that he had of, of the, the point of attack being blocked and him slashing and cutting back. He was a great slashing type runner. And that's the one thing that Wilbur possessed was the quickness in his feet. The guy could just make people miss him. He would hit the hole very quickly. It was very obvious from the get-go that this guy was something special. The pitch to Montgomery. Cut back at the 15. Across the 20. Cut back 25. When you have a guy like that, you're not on offense unless you give him the ball. You know, I always thought, my gosh, when I, as soon as I give the ball to somebody else, I'm giving him to a second stringer because I don't have anybody else like him. He used to carry the ball 25 times and line up as wide receiver 10 other times. He clearly was our best football player. And uh, you want to get the ball in the hands of your best football player. Um, I would give the ball to Wilbert 50 times a game if it was my choice. So, in my opinion, he was underutilized. And I think, you know, this to wear and tear in his body took its toll on and I remember when Wilbur would walk in after a football game, his hands were all pink. I mean, they were just all from the astroturf. His arms were all beat up. He had lumps all over his shoulders and his back from where people were hitting him. That as a 10-year veteran, I felt obligated to get up and give this man the training table room. And then to me, the leadership that Wilbur Montgomery showed was the ability to go out there on Sunday afternoon, take a pounding, and then be ready for practice on Wednesday. That was the kind of leadership that he provided. It was, was non-verbal, it was just through action. On the eve of the biggest game in the Vermeil era, Wilbert Montgomery proved he could play his best even when he felt his worst. I collapsed in the Wednesday practice. I didn't practice no more the entire week, even game day. While the team was out in pregame warm-up, I was still in the locker room. They was working on me, trying to get me ready to play. I come running out of the tunnel, walked up and told coach I was ready to go for the next play, and that set the tone for that, that whole day. Leave Wilbert in there. Wilbert, to stand next to him and, and go to war on Sunday, you had great confidence you had a chance to win because you knew what he was going to give you. 25-30, People used to ask me, they'd say, Dick, you know, you're a really intense, highly motivated guy. Who motivates you? The first person I would think about is Wilbert Montgomery. The first person. Now you identify with effort and talent and giving and asking for nothing in return. Yeah, you know, there just aren't many guys like that anymore. He is the greatest eagle I think that's ever played the game.